teach the kids the Word of God, and uh, we praise God for that. And you know, uh, if we don't teach our children, the world will. And so uh, we, uh, we teach them the Word of God, we teach them uh, the power of God, we teach them the love of God, and, and so we praise God for, for each one of, uh, of the children that God gives us. And um, so uh, this morning, <coughs> uh, I have uh, this sermon, um, God is God, and there is no other. You know, because uh, in the world, you know, believe it or not, I mean, everybody calls something God, you know, but there's only one God, and there is no other, right? And it's the God of the Bible that I'll be preaching this morning. And this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. God's holy word. God's holy word. I will make it a lamp to my feet. I will make it a lamp to my feet. And a light into my path. I will hide his word in my heart. That I might not sin against God. I am who it says that I am. I will stand. I will proclaim. And I will believe it. As truth over all else. It is the revelation of Jesus. It is a proof of God. It is the foundation of all life. It is alive and active. In this church. And in me. Somebody say glory. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Remain standing and receive the blessing of the Lord according to Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. For the glory of the Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I lift up and invoke the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, upon you. Receive the blessing of God Almighty by saying amen. 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 Let's be seated, and as we're being seated, let's say our purpose statement together. Whatever it takes to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. Now, uh, uh, in order for us to understand that God is greater than our enemies, we have to first of all know who, who, uh, who our God is, right? I mean, uh, a lot of people say, well, God is this or God is that. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we think that if we come to church... And we think that if we, uh, you know, uh, listen to the preaching, we think even if we think we can minister the Word, but uh, we can get off uh, of serving the true God, can't we? And, we need, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delve into that this morning because God is God and there is no other. And so um, um, over the centuries, God has revealed Himself to man through names and events that have taken place in the world, but man has not listened to the voice of God. In a lot of cases, uh, that calls from heaven or the voice of God that is pro proclaimed here on the earth. Man continues to strive with his creator. And, uh, but one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord uh, to the glory of God the Father. There, he is God and there is no other. Uh, uh, through the prophet uh, uh, Isaiah, uh, God revealed that he was God and there was no other. We're going to get into that in Isaiah 45 in just a minute. In today's world, we have many gods just as all, we always have had. Now, a lot of times you say, yeah, you know, we have many gods. And, you know, people will serve Buddha or they'll sue, you know, serve some other god. But I'm talking about what are the gods, the false gods in the church house that people are, are, are serving. Because the Colossian letter addresses some of them. The Colossian letter, uh, it helps us understand that, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, we have the God of intellectualism. We have the God of the intellectualist because that's what he was addressing in the book of Colossians was the Gnosticism. And the Gnosticism means that we our, our three pounds of gray matter up here no more than the God of creation. And that's what uh, people can get into because they think they are holier than thou or whatever it takes. We have the God of intellectualism. Paul warned the Colossian church about it over in Colossians 2. Let's go to Colossians 2. And uh, let's uh, get that there. 
Colossians 2, and I'm going to be reading from 4 through 12. It says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Now, uh, um, these, this is a, a solemn warning that we can be beguiled or we can be you know, caught up with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, I am with you in the spirit, joy in beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in Him. Okay, if you received a God, if you've humbled yourself, if you've repented of your sin, and God has come into your life and gave you joy unspeakable and full of glory, that's how we should walk in Him. Right? Because a lot of times uh, we receive Christ and then we don't walk the same way uh, in, the, in Him after that. And it says, um, uh, verse 6, it says, As we have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware. Now, when we look at that word beware, we think of what? Beware, beware of dog, right? Um, it's useless to put up a beware of dog on my fence because, you know, I have this dog and she looks mean. I mean, and but it, when you come over there, she wants you to rub her belly. And it would be useless to put up beware of dog on the fence. So anyway, uh, but anyway, beware, uh, it says, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the, the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. It says, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, uh, we would be complete in You, in all principality and power. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> it is amazing that men esteem the three pounds of gray matter over the, the God that created the whole universe, you know. And uh, the, the, the phrase philosophy and vain deceit uh, in, in uh, Colossians 2.8 is rendered intellectualism, okay. Uh, my philosophy is better than yours. Uh, matter of fact, you know, I'm smarter than you are, uh, so uh, you have to listen to what I say. And if you don't listen to what I say, uh, I'm going to get mad at you, right? Uh, or, or, high, or high sounding nonsense. J.B. Phillips has said, The best man, all the best man can say is, I think. But I thank my God that the believer can come back with all the authority of the Holy Ghost inspired, infallible, inerrant word, word of God and say, I know, I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day is what the Apostle Paul said. Uh, so you, so uh, we do not have to uh, second guess the word of God because it is established uh, forever in heaven, and Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Uh, you know, the word of God is more uh, solid. The word of God is is, uh, is a better foundation than the dirt you're standing on. Uh, we, because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. It is true that God wants us to use our intellects that he has given to us, but it is not something that is to be exalted over the one who created us. You see? And so let's go to Isaiah 45. I'm going to be in Isaiah 45 today a little bit. And so, um, because um, Isaiah the prophet is uh, wanting to get um, a point across because they're, like in, um, in the book of uh, Colossians, people are striving with their maker. Okay? And um, you say, oh, people don't strive with their maker in the church house, do they? Well, let's, uh, let's find out uh, today. Uh, it says in verse uh, 1, verse, uh, chapter 45 of Isaiah, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the, the crooked path straight, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. One of these days, Jesus is coming back, and you know what it is? It's going to be payday someday. 
Now, uh, and so he's going to break the bars of iron and everything. Verse 3, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Amen. There's a lot of people today that want to preach replacement theology. They want to place that, uh, that Israel has been replaced uh, uh, by uh, Christianity. They want to uh, preach that, uh, you know, Catholicism has been replaced, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 you know, by God, uh, you know, with Israel. But th th that is false doctrine. God is the God of Israel. He wants us to know that he is the God of Israel. Verse 4, For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, uh, mine elect, I have even called thee by my name. I have surnamed thee, uh, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. You mean Israel didn't know their own God? Yeah. I mean, sometimes in the church we don't know who we're serving. Mm. Verse 6, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, that's us, that there is none beside me. I'm the Lord, and there is none else. I form light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, there's a verse you can get hung up for in, on a minute, you know. Now drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Now if you want to strive against God, woe unto you. Okay? Let the, the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, what are you making? Or will thy work, uh, uh, or, or thy work, he hath no hands. Uh, woe unto to him that saith unto his father, uh, What begettest thou, or, or to the woman, uh, what uh, hast thou brought forth? Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and, and, uh, and his Maker, Ask of me things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands. Command you me. I have made the earth, and created man upon it. I mean, he goes back to the creation, doesn't he? I have created earth and man upon it. I even my hands have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. You know that God commands the host of heaven. He commands the host of the stars. He uh, keeps the planets uh, uh, in the right place and different things. And, and so God has uh, done all this and he, and, and he thinks about it all the time. And he keeps things in place uh, as he has created it. You know that the world's best watches are, uh, are, uh, are timed to the universe because uh, that's the most accurate time you can have. And so we need to understand uh, it's, it, that God has, uh, has commanded this. Verse 13, I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall go uh, let go my captives, not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabaeans, men of stature shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine, and, and, and shall come after thee. In chains they shall come over, and shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplications unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no other God. Verily thou art a God that hideth thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Now, he, is a, he, he hides himself too, doesn't he? I mean, he created everything, we can see it, but we have to receive him by faith, don't we? Because he said, but it says, seek, and you shall find, right? Now, uh, we got to do some seeking a lot of times. We have to do some searching and search the God of glory out, okay? Because he hides himself. Verse, thir uh, verse 16, and they shall be ashamed and, and also confounded, all them that uh, shall go to confuse them together that are uh, the makers of idols. So here's all these makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord uh, with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed or confounded. World without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself, that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. There is none else. I have not spoken in secret in the dark places of the earth. 
I, uh, I said not in the seed of Jacob, seek me, uh, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come draw near together that uh, uh, ye that are escaped of the nations, they have no knowledge that set up wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together who hath declared this from ancient times, who has told it from that time. Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself the word is God out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord, Have I righteousness and strength, even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified, and shall glory. Isaiah 45. God is God, and there is no other. I don't care what you think, when I say, thus saith the Lord, woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Amen. If, if the Bible says, thus saith the Lord, we probably ought to pay attention to it. Do, uh, do you want to know um, where the section of Scripture that, uh, that the Holy Ghost used to inspire the Apostle Paul to write, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess? It's here in Isaiah 45. Uh, where it also says several times, I'm, I'm, the, I'm God, there is no other. Jesus the Christ is the one that you and I will have to deal with at some time in this life or the life to come. Here it says in Hebrews 4, 13 and 14, it says, in whom also, uh, says uh, Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight, but all things are naked and opened into the eyes of him with whom we, we have to do. Seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We're going to have to deal with Jesus either down here or we're going to have to deal with Jesus up there. Every, you know, we're going to have to deal with him. Another God that men have, have had forever, not only is intellectualism, another God is ritualism. Ritualism. Colossians 2, 11 through 13. <clears throat> Colossians 2, 11 through 13 says, And whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he hath quickened together with him, having forgiven you. How many trespasses? All, All trespasses. Now, <clears throat> but a lot of times people will get into ritualism. And um, the Old Testament circumcision was an outward sign of the inward faith that was done in obedience uh, to uh, to confirm faith in God, right? Faith in His power. But I do not care about what you have done unless the inward matches the outward, okay? Uh, because a lot of anybody can say, oh yeah, Jesus is my Lord. I know Jesus. But if the inward doesn't match the outward, we got a problem. We have uh, uh, we have double mindedness, Amen. and so uh, we need to have the inward match the outward. And a lot of times, you know, people can come into the church. Man, they can make fair speeches. They can, uh, you know, say, man, I'm the, I'm the most spiritual thing that you've ever seen in your life. And then uh, pretty soon, they're, they're starting to cause division. And pretty soon, they're starting to cause dissension and strife and everything else. Uh, and they're into ritualism instead of Jesus Christ. Now, I know this is maybe kind of a hard message, but, you know, let's, let's get through it. Because intellectualism and ritualism and legalism and ceremonialism and mysticism is all cult practices 
that Paul addresses in the book of Colossians. Now, um, now in the New Testament, baptism is in the New Testament is the outward sign of the inward faith that is done in obedience to confirm your faith in God, right? I mean, it says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, right? So, uh, so it's an outward sign of the inward faith done in obedience uh, to God. Now, if your baptism is a ritual only, then what good is it in your life? Now, if you just come to God, oh, I need to get baptized, you know, so I can get that over with. And, and I, I don't know how many people I've baptized here at, at Fernley First Baptist Church. And sometimes you baptize them and you, and, and you never see them again. You know, well, I got through the ritualism of baptism, you know, got that taken care of. But their life never changes into obedience to God. You see? And so, uh, baptism, if, if your baptism is a ritual only, what good is it in your life? Because it is not spirituality. In fact, it's idolatry, and does not, uh, and it does a person no good in the kingdom of God. God is God, and there is no other. I want to go to Romans chapter two. Romans chapter two. Your second here. Romans chapter two. Now I'm going to start in verse 23. 23, verse, two, uh, verse 23. It says, uh, Thou that makest thy boast of the law through uh, breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. Okay, if, you, if you're making your boast that you're a good Christian, you're making your boast in the law, and you're dishonoring God, uh, you're committing sacrilege. Okay? Um, this is uh, verse 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles uh, through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth if you keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. You see, or, or we could put baptism in there in the New Testament. Your baptism is made unbaptism. Okay? Uh, therefore, if the uncircumcised, uh, if the uncircumcised, that's the Gentiles, keep the righteousness of the law, shall it not, shall not his uncircumcision be counted uh, for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Or we can put, you're not a Baptist, which is one outwardly. You're not a Jew, which is one out, outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Amen. You see, the inward has to match the outward. If the, uh, if the inward doesn't match the outward, then we've got a problem. It's a, if the inward doesn't match the outward, it may just be idolatry and, and ritualism. Ritualism is a gospel of the cult as well as intellectualism. Also, legalism and ceremonialism. Back to Colossians 2, 14 through 17. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way. Nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holy day or of the new moon or the Sabbath days. You see, we can get into, oh, you know, uh, a special day, you know. And we, we uh, just celebrate Sunday because it's the day of resur resurrection, right? And, uh, you know, the Jewish Sabbath was Saturday, you know, but it, you know, don't let anybody judge you on uh, which day. If you want to, you know, worship on Saturday, that's fine with me, you know. If you want to worship on Tuesday, that's fine with me. We ought to be worshiping every day, amen? amen. And so, uh, uh, God is God and there is no other. If any man is in Christ, he's a what? A new creation or creation. All things are passed away, but all things become new. When a man or woman comes to Christ, he repents through their sin, and they get a whole brand new life. Now, 
Uh, what else uh, is a uh, can be in the church uh, that we overlook sometimes? How about mysticism? Mysticism is another gospel of the cult. Okay, uh, Colossians two eighteen and nineteen says this: Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which ye have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body of by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increased with the increase of God. Now, we still have mystics with us today. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of red flags that goes up when somebody comes up to Pastor Curtis here. And says, oh, Pastor, I've had, a, I've had a dream about you. Or something like that. I says, okay, uh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, I don't want to hear it. You know, I don't want to hear it. Because it is a, 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 a mystic something out of your imagination. You know, and I mean, we have that in the church all the time. You know, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. And, and you know, we, we find that, I mean, God speaks against that stuff. You know, and uh, mysticism is a gospel of the cult. You see, we still have mystics with us today that try to deceive you with their spirituality. Now, I'm super spiritual. I have gifts that you don't have. I'm spirit, more spiritual than you. Or whatever they say. Now, uh, trying to get you to think that they are closer to God than the rest of us because of what they say about angels and how humble they are in their quiet or brown robes. You know, um, there was a rash of this going around in the 60s in places like San Francisco, right? I mean, Mike remembers it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it says, God, the Word of God says that they are vainly puffed up in their flesh and mind, right? And, you know, they, you know, they have guys going around in their brown ropes, oming or something like that. And, and you know, uh, hey, don't be uh, deceived by that stuff. Do not be deceived with Wicca or witchcraft because the Word of God calls witchcraft a work of the flesh. Okay? There's nothing spiritual about it. All this witchcraft is is wanting to control somebody else with mysticism and their own holier-than-thou spirituality. You see? Um... Uh, says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. When people strive with their maker, when they rebel against God, they can get into all kinds of spiritualism and mysticism and witchcraft. Um, it is simply people wanting control over another by means of intimidation. Let's go to Galatians 5, 19 through 20. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Okay, this gives you a list. <coughs> okay, so... Uh, if you want to what, know what the works of the flesh are, here's one of the lists. There's several lists in the Bible. Uh, <clears throat> adultery, fornication, um, those are all works of the flesh. Uh, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Now, lasciviousness is kind of a long churchy word, but lasciviousness means. I'm giving myself a license to sin because the grace of God's on me. That's lasciviousness. It's it's a sexual perversion. Okay? Idolatry. Look at the next one, witchcraft. And you know, the word witchcraft in the original Greek is the word pharmakia, which we get the word pharmacy from in our English language which indicates drug abuse. Now there's no bigger drug pusher in the, in, in the world than the United States government. Every commercial you see on TV, they want to push another drug on you. You know. Witchcraft. Pharmakia. Hatred. That's a work of the flesh. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. 
heresies. The Bible calls all that stuff the works of the flesh. When people come into the church house and say, I love you, but they hate you, that's a work of the flesh. God is God, and there is no other. Amen. How about asceticism? Now, that's, uh, I'll explain that because I had to look it up myself. <laughs> that is that one can reach a higher spiritual state by rigorous self discipline and self denial. I can reach a higher state of spirituality if I chastise myself enough and, you know, asceticism. Colossians 2 20 through 23. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as through, through living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? It says, Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. See, these are those things that are still attacking the simplicity that is in Christ with all these uh, things, uh, with all these things, say, is that Jesus Christ is okay. Well, Jesus is okay. But if you really want to get spiritual, like me, <laughs> then follow what I do and give your money to me, which leads to materialism. Intellectualism, ritualism, legalism, mysticism, asceticism, and materialism was the five-headed monster that Paul was addressing in the Colossian church. Hmm. Throw greed and covetousness and fornication in there and you have the majority of the churches in America today. Well, that's, that's, that's rough, Pastor. No, that's word. That's the word. And you know what else in Colossians? Colossians, uh, Paul told that that letter of the Colossians should be read to the Laodiceans. You remember the Laodiceans, the book of Revelation. They were the lukewarm church. They thought they were okay, but they were blind. And God said he was going to vomit them out of his mouth. He said, have this letter written to the lay of his sins. God is God and there is no other. He is our creator. And it is he that will one day we will one day have to deal with. And this is one preacher that still calls people everywhere to repent of their sins and turn completely to God as their only hope and their only salvation. And will you come to him today his way? Amen. You see? Because there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved than that of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the only way, He's the only truth, and He's the only life. He's the only God, and there is no other. Right. He's the only Savior, and there is no other. And He encourages people to come to Him and be saved, repent of their sins, and be saved. Right. You know, after the uh, uh, Apostle Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. He says, what must we do? And he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't know about you, I want the gift of the Holy Ghost in me. Right. Because I, in myself, in my flesh, the Apostle Paul says, that I say the same thing, in my flesh dwelleth how many good things? No, no good thing. No good thing. I mean, I can tell, I don't want to sit here and confess all my sins before you. You know that I've done in the flesh, because uh, you know I'm like uh, um, I, I'm like uh, you know the 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 psalmist. If I had to count sins and iniquities, it'd be more than the hairs of my head. I'm just thinking I don't. I thank God I don't have as many hairs on my head anymore. But uh, well, that's not funny. All right. But anyway, uh, you know. But we can come to God, and we can have all of our transgressions forgiven. Isn't that, and that's a glorious gospel, isn't it? Amen. We can have every sin forgiven. And you know, you say, well, what about future sins? 
Is God going to forgive me of those too? You realize at the cross, all of your sins were future? And He's forget. you know, His blood and His sacrifice cleanses us from all sin. And I praise God. I can, that's the gospel message that I am privileged to preach. That you can be saved. But you can't be saved in numerous ways. There's only one way you can be saved. That's right. And that's through the God of creation, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And one of these days, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, of things on earth, of things under the earth. You know, that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. One day, Satan himself is going to bow his knees to the God of glory, and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen? Amen. Is there any decisions that need to be made this morning? I'm say, you know, hey, come to Christ. Come to Him. Like Isaiah said, come to God. You know, come to the Creator. That's how you know which one's the true God. Okay? You know, you, well, I don't know, Pastor Kirk, which one, which one do I go to? Come to the Creator. The one that made the heavens. The one that made the earth. The ones that made you. Okay, come to the Creator. And um, uh, that's the right one, okay? And uh, so, uh, you know, if you have a decision or something, wave at me or something, maybe you need to follow the Lord in baptism. Maybe you need to, uh, you know, uh, say, hey, I want to be a member of Fernley First Baptist Church. You know, those are all decisions that you can make uh, publicly. And uh, we praise God for Him putting this church in Fernley for such a time as this. Okay, it's no time to quit praying. And I think that if, if people understood how volatile the United States is right now at this time, we would have a, 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 a bigger you know, crowd in the church praying because uh, we are in a volatile state right now. Do you know that the, the Europeans are, are uh, wanting um, us to sign up for the new world order and put China in control of everything and between now and uh, January 20th we don't know what's going to happen okay so it's uh, we're a very volatile place in uh, in our world today so let's keep on praying that God would have mercy on us okay all right any other anybody have a comment this morning before we dismiss yes I think I read this every month and it goes right with your message. But it's in Job and that he talks to Job who God called Job a righteous man. And he said, Who is it, who this whose darkness counsels by my words without knowledge? And he says, You're going to listen to me and then you're going to answer me. And I, I ask everybody, read chapter 38, 39, 40. Mm -hmm, sure. And, and it, the whole thing goes all the way back to where were you when I created? Where, did, where were you when I laid the line? I mean, you get a, an idea of what God did before man even right. was evolved, or made, I should say. And it, it's just, it opened my eyes that no matter what I think, when pride comes in, you're thinking you're above God. Mm -hmm. Anything. Yeah. You can't put anything above God. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, we put our own thoughts above the Lord, you know. And the, the second commandment it says, "Thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt not have any graven images." And people engrave an image of God how they think their God should be. And they'll tell you, "Well, my God wouldn't send anybody to hell or something like that," you know. And I'd say, "Well, I'm sure your God would, wouldn't. He doesn't exist, you know. Uh, it's one that you've made up in your mind." Uh, so. Um, you know, we have to deal. And one of these days, like uh, uh, Hebrews 4.13 says, we're going to deal with the, with the Son of God. We're going to deal with Him now, or we're going to deal with Him later. You know, it's up to you. You know, I can, I can preach the gospel message, and, uh, but, it's, uh, but it's up to you to receive the gospel message. You know, so uh, praise God for that, you know. So, amen.
And I mean, he shut old Job's mouth even. And Job, like you say, was a righteous man. He's, he's one of the three guys, Job and Daniel and somebody else and Ezekiel, that uh, were the three righteous men on the earth, you know. And uh, you know, Job is one of them. All right. Because, you know, the, the Lord commands us to love, to, to love him with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our soul, and to love each other the only way we can do that is humble ourselves and not esteem ourselves above anybody else because when we start doing that, that's when we start to do the things it says not to do. Mm -hmm. And when we can humble ourselves before the Lord and love each other, it will help combat that type of yeah. spirit. Yeah, the, the modern church has accepted ritualism. They've accepted mysticism. They've, they've accepted... Intellectualism, they, they've accepted all those things that Colossians speak against. And, um, and, Colossians, and the book of Colossians was written because of the Gnostics, which Gnosticism means knowledge, you know. Well, I have this knowledge, and so my knowledge exceeds God, you know. And so that's why the book, because they had taken uh, Jesus out of the rightful place, and you know what they forgot? The main thing is to keep the main thing. The main thing. That's what the Colossians. That's what the Colossians forgot, right? His name is Jesus. Yeah. And so uh, uh, let's keep the main thing. The main thing. Let's keep in our Bibles and and you know keep on studying to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. Keep on praying for each other. Keep on loving each other. And um, you know. Uh, keep on praying for uh, for this church because the devil is attacking uh, this church, you know, a, a lot. So, uh, but keep on praying. But greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world, you know. And uh, so, praise God for that. Amen. So, all right. Well, let's go, to the Lord, in prayer uh, this morning. Father God, we call upon Your name, and Lord, Your name is great and greatly to be praised. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, that Lord. Uh, as we uh, uh, go from this place, that, Lord, uh, you would uh, uh, give us a hunger uh, and a thirst for your word, Father God. And, Lord, uh, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness will be filled, Lord God. So, Lord, we just pray, Father God, for that. And, Lord, I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, you'd guide us and keep us. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, you'd place your angels around us. I pray that you'd place your angels around this church. I pray that you'd keep us and guide us from the evil that's in the world and, the, and all this stuff that calls itself spirituality, uh, Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, you would uh, deliver us from. And, Lord, keep, help us keep the main thing, the main thing. And it's in his name we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you till we meet again.